everyone welcome back to my channel relapse tackle in this video i'm going to be pouring some jigs in my new arky style mold in the quarter ounce and three eighths ounce not any in the half ounce because uh they were out of stock of the five out hooks when i ordered hooks for this mold at barlow's so i'm gonna take the wrapper off they come with three pole pins and one eighth inch fiber weed guard um I'm going to set them aside. I prefer to use Teflon pins for pouring and also for painting. So these things are a pain to pull out so they get stuck in the lead and um, the Teflon pins come right out. So a couple fingers they just pull right out of the lead. So they're easy to use. So and since I haven't poured anything in this mold yet I was unsure of how well it would pour. So typically anything with a eighth inch fiber weed guard and um, a skirt collar and stuff on it, they pour a little bit harder than a mold that doesn't have the fiber weed guard and the, uh, the, sh the uh, collar. So if it had just a metal bait keeper Without the fiber weed guard, they pour a little bit easier. I'm going to dump these hooks on the bench here. And then um, start placing things in there. So with the Teflon pins, I use an O-ring on them. I've showed that in a couple other videos. So the O-ring helps hold that Teflon pin exactly where I want it. And I just slide it up, hold the o-ring and slide it up so it touches the hook so I can do that to the other size and that just makes it so it's I know that my fiber weed guard is going to be in there plenty far um, when I glue that in so these slip on pretty easy I just put it flat on my finger get it started and then roll it up or slide it up they really don't roll that well so if you guys have any questions or anything any suggestions uh, make sure you drop them in the comments so I can do my best to answer them or um, maybe you guys have a better method for a way to do something and I would like to know so like I said make sure the mold closes all the way with everything placed inside it I'm going to set it on top of the lee pot, let it uh, heat up. I've got my lee pot on um, four for the heat setting. This is a couple of the weed guards. So there's several different colors and stiffnesses for the weed guards and also sizes. So if you order any, make sure that you're ordering the correct sizes. Um, and then if you want to try different stiffnesses, that's you know that's what you can do too um, some people prefer really stiff weed guards some prefer softer so like a medium would be good um, I forgot to put my gloves on here and then I'm just gonna I was gonna pour in the spot without the hooks just to um, help heat up the mold a little bit more too And then I ended up pouring, saying the heck with it, pouring right away anyway, because that would not be enough to heat the hooks. Just doing that real quick, pour. And uh, the mold is still not hot enough. So, did not pour all the way. So I'm going to pop these out of there, and then do some dry runs without any hooks in them. And then I'm going to use dry graphite spray on my mold. Um, if you are 
looking at possibly selling your molds. Um, I wouldn't probably use a dry graphite on them. It's kind of a pain to remove from the mold, but it makes them pour so much nicer. So I like using it, and I don't typically sell the molds that I use, so... But it is a night and day difference of how well they pour with the dry graphite compared to nothing in them at all. So, you can get the mold hot. And they're still not pouring good um, without hooks in them or the... Uh, uh, pull pin so or the fiber weed guard pin so use a little bit of uh, dry graphite doesn't take much if you could get a build up of this stuff on the flat surfaces though it'll prevent the mold from closing all the way it's just like layer after layer after layer of paint um, it's going to build up on the flat surfaces and uh, make you get a little bit of flashing on your jigs so hit it with the flat side of a razor blade or a putty knife or even um, taking a um, like stainless steel wire brush to them just to knock that stuff off of the flat surfaces so that your mold closes all the way. And then it gets more heat into it. Some molds, I mean, need to be heated quite a bit more than others. And like I said, typically the ones with the fiber weed guards, thicker hooks, um, and the uh, skirt collars and stuff. They require a little more heat to flow correctly. But once I get the molds heated up, I typically run as many hooks through them as I can. Um, but if you are going to run a couple thousand hooks, you should uh, probably have two molds or three molds. See, this did not close all the way. I believe uh, I had a hook that wasn't placed quite right. I think the, the uh, eyelet was in the way. So just look them over and make sure that they close tight. moment of truth to see if it poured correctly I don't think it did like I said I'm I'm doing a voiceover on this video because the exhaust fan and stuff is so loud in my work area that it doesn't pick up on my um, voice and stuff as much as it does all the rest of the stuff in the room and then when I drop things on the bench like I just did there it's so loud so I turned the volume down for the background noise and stuff. You can see both of those didn't pour well, so now I just um, jump forward. And then if you're going to store them, store them in bags, unpainted. So I write down the size and what hook I'm using in them so I remember. Because I'm not using the recommended hooks, so if I don't write down what hooks I was putting in there I might run the uh, recommended hook instead of the one that I wanted in it the next time around and I'll have different jigs 
I do like these VMC hooks though. So, finally got enough heat into the mold. Everything's pouring good now. So, typically what I would do now, instead of clipping the sprue off right here right now, I would load the mold back up with hooks and my pull pins and everything, and then uh, place it back on top of the leaf pot so that everything get it, can get up to temp while I clean these up. It's kind of a time saver, but for the video's sake, I just was showing you how to clip the sprue off. Um, these ones I don't do one one cut, I do three cuts because it's on a radius. So I take small cuts and then I take the flush cutter and just scrape at it so that um, I smooth it out. Um, don't use a file or a belt sander or anything like that because of the particulates that it's going to fly around in the room. And try not to touch your face. You can see I use the back side of my arm there. And I don't know what it is. Every time I can't touch my face, you get, start getting itchy and stuff. And It's like picking up a box or something and you're moving it moving it and then you get an itchy nose it's just annoying <laughs> but it happens all the time for whatever reason so I'm gonna pour a couple more after it heats up a little bit once the molds hot though it doesn't take much to heat up the hooks unless they're really big hooks I mean you get 9 out and 10 out hooks and stuff like that um, long shank and wide gap and all that the more material that's in the head um, the more heat you're going to have to put into the hook to make sure it's up to temp so another thing is is the um, using these pins they don't require as much heat either because um, the the metal pull pins just require more heat than the Teflon and the Teflon just slides out like I said with two fingers super easy um, there you go nice clean nice clean jig so if you could give the video a like share it with your friends and please subscribe for more videos